there. Welcome back. Uh, you're here with Barry. And I want to continue a little bit about our uh, Dominican 4x4 subject and what you're going to need. Uh, some of the basic ideas I've come across. But what I'd like to do first is disclose, uh, before we go any further, that uh, I am not a professional driver in any sense. I um, am only somebody that uh, has been really enjoying off-roading and 4 by 4 to varying degrees. Um, I guess since I was about 30 and I'm uh, going to be turning 61 in uh, about five, six weeks from now. I've had the privilege of uh, four by fouring or off-roading, however you'd like to choose it, um, in Australia, in lots in my home country, Canada, Western Canada, in the mountains around Alberta, the Rockies, uh, all through the Caribbean, uh, a lot of the Mideast, uh, when I used to get shipped to places like Sharm El Sheikh or Ras Muhammad, I always allowed myself some extra time to uh, enjoy this but where it really took off for me was um, when I hit about 30 and I started to get out of the uh, underwater photography thing I was married and uh, you know being being out of the country for over 300 uh, days out of the year doesn't allow for much of a marriage so it was a decision thing and uh, a good buddy of mine back in Alberta just decided to ask me to come along on a weekend venture out around Banff the area of Banff which many of you would know. And ever since then, it tweaked me. Uh, I can't say I was blown away by it the first time, but it certainly did get my interest. And from there, I got invited out to a couple of more uh, getaways and what have you. And so from someone who is definitely not an expert, but has a lot of experience, I can tell you this much. Some of the basics, the equipment and the safety is, is similar in all countries. The terrains and what you're going to need, however, is not. And the first thing to decide is what is your interest? And, and for most people that I meet, uh, the DR is blessed with so many beautiful um, rock roads that are not hard at all, uh, so many uh, good dirt roads that go through some of the most beautiful terrain and, and yield some of the most beautiful scenes you can imagine. And I say this with all honesty, I know several places where you can have almost a hundred mile view from where you're at. And that is, is quite, uh, quite a statement to say, however it is true. And the first thing is to I suppose discuss before we even get into what I call your must-haves for 4 by 4 I want to get across to our viewing audience that most of what we're doing and most of what you're going to do is considered mild. And that's a, that, that's a wonderful thing because there's so many trails for years of entertainment throughout this country that are not serious four by four. For me, rock climbing and four by four is a completely different subject than off-roading. Okay, So if you're the type of um, family or individual that wants to go out for a nice day and a picnic and, and uh, maybe an overnight and stop in a town and continue on, um, the first thing I'd like to say is off-roading here, camping is a wonderful thing and it's a great thing but I don't see it necessary unless it's something you want to do in the DR. Um, when I off-roaded quite a bit up in, uh, in Australia, you know, the, the trails are four, five, six hundred miles long, so obviously you're, you're definitely camping. You need to be equipped with tents, propane stoves, or butane. Um, you need so much more equipment to properly cover the terrain in Australia than you're going to need here, simply because the countries are much smaller. Uh, here, a long off-road adventure is going to be approximately four hours, give or take. 
So um, what we found works best for us, and of course it's all subjective, but what works best for us seems to be enjoying your days and checking into a modestly priced uh, hotel for the evening. Now, I do a bit more extreme. I will camp with a couple of, uh, of my closer friends that we are, and we are properly prepared for that for both safety and, and things of that nature. But that's not what I'm trying to get across to my subscribers. What I'm trying to get across is you can enjoy a family day, very mild, beautiful, get out in the middle of nowhere, but yet you're not far from anywhere. And that's, that's a unique difference about this country. So I guess before we continue on, I'm going to discuss the various vehicles you need. I'm just going to flash a few pictures through this video before we continue on to what I call the 10 or 12 must-haves for uh, safe off-roading. Okay, so as I flip through these pictures, you've seen pictures of Yoda. Uh, I'll throw in a couple of other 4x4s. I want to first explain, like, that is way overkill for what I'm talking about. Unless you're going to be going into the um, more middle to extreme off-road 4x4ing, you don't need a vehicle anything like this. Uh, you'll see flashing through the screen now, Leanne's going to post up some of the better um, vehicles, examples I should say, of this is all you need. Okay, so what we're going to end up doing before making each, we're going to make this a little segment. So um, I think first and foremost would be the vehicle. Okay, I'll flash some and you'll see pictures. This is not what you need. And you'll see other pictures of saying this is perfect. It'll do fine for what you need. Okay, so what I want to do is commence from there and then we'll get into the various safety equipment and things that you should have while you're even off-roading with a family, okay? These are just mostly common sense. If you're doing it to what I'm trying to explain, you're not going to be bogging down and things like that. However, if it rains and it gets muddy and you get stuck, you do need to have the proper equipment to get you unstuck. Okay, so we'll carry on a little bit further on down the line, but uh, right now we'll deal with what basic kind of vehicle do you need? And I think you'll be surprised. Okay, we'll continue and catch you on a little bit later. Bye.